Making steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. This is part 10. Fitting the condenser and tank assembly and making the piping for the engines. It's fairly essential that this tank assembly is right in the centre of the plant to match the position of the aerial engine in front of it. And in this clip I'm using a transfer punch to mark the position of the holes on the baseboard. This HMG satin black paint really is good stuff and as you can see it's a very good match for the boiler. And I'm being very careful not to hit the tanks with the hammer. Now it's time to drill the holes in the baseboard. This is a number 48 drill which I'm using as a tapping size drill for 6BA. I notice in this clip that there are one or two slight scratches on the baseboard but these will all disappear when I wipe over the baseboard with some varnish before I finish the plant. I don't know what kind of varnish has been used on the baseboard because I didn't do it, but it doesn't seem to be very durable, and it seems to mark quite easily. When I varnish baseboards, I use Ron Seal hard glaze, but I never use the water-based stuff, I don't like that in the slightest. And as I've just mentioned, before I finally fit the parts for the last time, I will apply a small amount of this Ron Seal hard glaze to a cloth and wipe over the baseboard, and this will get rid of any scratches permanently. I'm threading the holes using a 6BA tap, but I'm not taking the tap right down to the bottom of the hole, because when I screw in the 6BA bolts, the bolts themselves will cut the last part of the thread, and this will make for a very firm and tight fitting. Before I fit the tank assembly in place though, it's fairly important to fit this part. This is the drain tap, and it's used for draining the water and the oil residue from the condenser. Before anyone comments, the white spots that you can see on the tank assembly are just small particles of sawdust generated by the drilling and tapping of the baseboard. Once the tap's fitted in place, it's time to screw the water tank assembly down onto the baseboard. And I'm using four dome head 6BA bolts, or screws, or machine screws, or whatever you want to call them. I will continue to call them small bolts, because that's what they look like to me. Once I tightened all these small bolts, I was very pleased to see that none of the paint had flaked off the baseboard. So it would appear that if you use precision paints, single pack etch primer, and follow the instructions that come with the etch primer, you will not have a problem. The paint is sticking beautifully to the brass. Oh no, and now the piping begins, so this is the worst part of the job for me. I'm using this Chinese pipe bending tool, which allows me to put very tight bends in the copper piping. And the piping is 5 30 seconds of an inch or 4 millimeter pipe and these are quite tight bends and it looks okay. The more piping that you have on a steam plant the neater that it needs to be. You have to think it through before you start and it's most important that the pipe runs follow each other where necessary. These are the steam inlet pipes to the engine and they're going to be wrapped in string. I really can't wait to do that. In case you're watching, thinking, well, it's all right for you, you know what you're doing. Well, yeah, I do. I've been doing it for a long time. And on the video, it looks really simple, but it isn't really simple in the slightest. I actually made two lengths that were unusable. They will be chopped up and put in my box of chopped up small lengths of copper pipe. For once, I'm lost for words. I can't really tell you how to do this. It's very much a feel situation. You don't really measure, you sort of guesstimate that's a cross between guess and estimate, where the pipes need to bend. And as I said earlier, I bent two pieces of this kind of pipe in entirely the wrong place. And once you've bent it, that's your lot. These tight bends really harden the copper. The only way to unbend it is to heat it to a red heat, and then you can unbend it. And this process is known as annealing. Some metals work harden, others don't, but copper work hardens very quickly. A word of caution, once you cut the initial piece of pipe to length, always clean up the end, because you will scratch your baseboard very badly if the ends of the copper pipe are sharp. That's two down and one to go. This is the last piece of copper pipe going into position, and this is the longest one. It goes all the way from the boiler, all the way to the small vertical engine at the other end of the baseboard. Now all the pipes are silver soldered, they all have unions on them, so it's time to test them. I've connected my compressed air line to the boiler, and when I open the valves one at a time, off they go. These single cylinder engines are normally not self-starting, but when I opened the valves on the aerial engine and on the Perseus engine, the crankshaft was positioned in exactly the right place so the engines started all by themselves. 
It's more usual when opening the steam valve to have to rotate the flywheel until it goes on its own. As usual, I had forgotten to tighten a couple of the union nuts. I do this, I don't know why. I'm generally preoccupied with other aspects of the job. None of these engines are fitted with exhaust piping of any kind. No adapters, no nothing. So it's time to look at this, and I will be showing this in detail in the next episode. But for now, just to test the piping of course, I'm going to leave the engines running to the end of the video and say thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.